In this video, we're going to focus on creating a movable background marker like this on Hoover, very similar to Coinbase in Chart.js 4. So let's start to look how to create a movable background marker on Hoover, very similar to Coinbase. Before we even start with that, we have to make sure we have the boiler template. And this boiler template can be found here on chartjs3.com getting started. This link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code. Next, if you want to support my channel, check out my Patreon page here. Where you can get the source code of this video and many others. All right, let's start to work on this. First thing what I want to do is I want to convert all of these into a line chart. That's probably more practical. So I'm going to say line, save, refresh. There we are. Next, what I want to do is I want to fill up this part and remove all these excess colors. So we're going to say here, border width, comma, fill, true. If I do this, save, it will get the very red color here. But what we can do as well is remove all these other points with the colors that is in here. I'm going to just delete all of this. So we have a single red one. Save that, refresh. Now we have one consistent color. So what we want to do is that when we hover, it should follow the mouse cursor. To do this, we need to create our custom plugin. So we're going to say comma here, and let's call this plugin, um, or you have say here, plugins. And we can say here, now uh, what is a nice term, hover marker background, and maybe a movable hover marker background, anything you want. So what I'm going to say here, slash slash, and this will be the plugin block with the K of course. Then what I want to do here is, because we're going to use hoisting and hoisting is basically a value that we want to move to other places, but we will not define it here yet. And later on, it will be defined. This is very important. So we're going to say here hover marker, but just leave this like that. So it's a blank value that we can use later on. Then what I want to do here is constant, Hoover marker background equals, then we're going to say here the ID will be that of course, and then we have two structures. We have the item that we want to draw, basically that will be the line based on our cursor and this background that will be grayed out or something like that. So for that, I'm going to say after data sets draw. And the reason why I'm saying that one is because I want to draw that a marker, that Hoover marker, on top of our data points and not behind it. So that is the first one here. I'm going to say here, chart, arcs and plugins. And then what I'm going to do here is I'll just leave that for now because we won't be using this yet. This is basically the first one, but that will only respond after we do a Hoover event of being on this point. So then it's the moment we want to draw and we will draw it after the data set. That's the whole logic here. So what we're going to say here that after event, we want to do something. And what we're going to do is, we're going to redraw our item here based on the after data sets draw. Uh, what we're going to do here then is we can say here the chart and the arguments. And the reason why we need the arguments here is we need to know the cursor. So what we're going to do here is first of all, an object destructuring. If you are familiar, if you're not familiar with the object destructuring, please check out my video, which is in the description box, understanding charges, object destructuring. And what I want to grab here is, well, let's see if we even need anything. I, I realize perhaps we don't need anything. I'll just leave it like that. Maybe we don't need it at all. What I do need here is the following. If we do a console log and we say arcs. If I save this, refresh, because all I need is really the X cursor coordinates. So if I go here, you can see it tracks the event. And then what we're going to say here, it checks are we within the chart area, which is true. And then if I click here on event, it knows even the type of event, but also the X and Y coordinates where I am on the chart area or on the canvas. What I need is just this item here. So I'm going to grab this. I probably won't be needing this as well to see if our cursor is within there, because once we're outside of the chart area, we don't want to draw the line anymore. The line and the hover effect should be gone. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say here constant, and we can just say here maybe X coordinate will be equal, and this will be equal to the uh, arcs.event.x. Then if I do here console log, we should see here now, 
the x coordinate being shown save that refresh as you can see here there we are and if we go up and down you can see it will only track the x coordinate and uh, x coordinate is basically from left to right so we don't need the y coordinate but if you want to you can just get the y here and convert this to y as well what i want to do now is basically check two things first of all we make an if statement because i only want to track the x coordinate if we are in the chart area so what i'm going to say here if arcs dot in chart area if this is true in that case i want to say the hoover marker will be equal to the x coordinate or the hoover marker is the x coordinate so we can just put it like that hoover marker and then we say here the x coordinate so then we have that uh, next what I want to do here and this is of course not the way to do it sorry it's like that next what I want to do is if we're outside of the, the chart area we need to undo this so we say here else and then we're going to say here this value will now be undefined this is important or else it will keep it in memory so we have to undo or remove that x coordinate so once we did that i realized we don't need object destruction we could probably put it up but what we do need here is to redraw and for that we're going to give a special command it says arcs dot change equals true this by default is not in the uh, arcs console log but this one is an extra one where you basically indicate if this change equals true it will check this and then redraw everything above basically so that's what we're doing here now so now we can start to redraw what we want so what we want to do here is the following first of all because of the hoisting here the value can be moved in here because normally the value would be restricted but now we get the value from somewhere here push it all again up to the hoist this is what we call hoisting and then we can move it in here so if i do here now a console log and i'll say here hoover marker we should get now this value if we are within the item let's see if i have a console log here on no there's no console log so this one should be truly working and you can see here if i move and if i go out it is undefined so it recognizes when it's defined and when not and you can see here line 73 line 73 is this line here all right this is a confirmation for us so now what i need to do is an object destructuring i'm going to grab the object destructuring from this and what I need here is a few items. I want to have the CTX because I want to draw on the canvas, the chart area. And I'm going to say here, I want the top, the bottom, the left, the right, the width, and the height. And we probably don't need all of them, but having them can be useful. So then what I want to do is the following. We have this undefined moment here, and this undefined can give us an error and so what we want to do is we're going to create a if statement and we're going to say the if statement if the hoover marker equals true to undefined if this is the case i don't want to draw anything because the value that we need here can give an error if it's undefined because the canvas doesn't understand where do i draw or which coordinate or pixel do i need to draw the line so we have this undefined and then what we want to do is we want to return it or return nothing so do nothing so that's number one then what i want to do is start to draw so i'm going to say your ctx.save to save the variables or above and then i'm going to say your ctx.begin path and the reason why is i want to create a new shape that's independent of anything else now what we're going to do is basically two parts we have the line from top to bottom and then we have this area here that should become transparent or slightly lighter or grayed out. So what we're going to do here is, first of all, we're going to say ctx.stroke style for the color. We're going to give it a simple color. Right now, I'm just going to grab here the RGBA. I'm going to get the black uh, black color. So 000, and then here 0.1. So this is a solid black color. Next, what I want to do is I want to say ctx. Uh, uh, what is that the stroke that's the stroke style i need to have the line width the thickness of the line that will be three pixels and then 
what I want to do is I want to start moving or creating the line. I want to start the line. If I'm hovering here, the line should start here, going all the way down. So we're going to say here, CTX dot move to. And this is not even drawing the line. This is the intention to draw the line. Remember this. So the move to is the first starting point or first starting point intention. And what we need to do here is basically grab the hover marker. That's the information we need. Then I'm going to say here, I want us to go to the very top. Because basically this is the X coordinate and this is the Y coordinate. So the top is the Y and the hover marker is the X. Then I'm going to say a CTX and we say here, line two to create the connecting line. And the line should be a straight line. So the X and Y coordinates will be hover marker. And here we have the bottom. And if you're wondering why bottom, because the chart area here, these two coordinates gives us these options. So then once I have this, I'm going to say a CTX dot stroke to draw these lines. Save this, refresh. And as you can see here, apparently it doesn't work at all. So let's see what's going on. All right, we have RGBA is not defined. My bad, make sure that this is of course a string value. Save, refresh, there we are. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that if we move outside the chart area, you can see here, it will not draw anymore. So we have the first part working and you can see here, while we're doing this, the tooltip is still working nicely. So that is good, it will not block our tooltip. Next what we want to do is the uh, the right side should have this colored background uh, color. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this. But this one, this time I will say here, this will be the fill style to fill this rectangle that we're going to make. But I'm going to give this a light color. So I say 0 0.1, that means 90% transparency, trans transparency and 10% visibility so it will be very light we have this here and we have here the move tool and the line tool so we have this stroke and we can borrow this part here because the stroke here is the command to draw the line but not the background color for that what we can do is we can build on this basically we have this straight line all i want to go now is go to the right side go up and go back to wherever this is so what i can do here this is quite easy you can copy this. We're going to put that after the stroke. And the reason why after, because this is the command to draw and this is the intention to draw. So I don't want to draw this line because if I would do this one, for example, here, and I want to go to this left or sorry, right side here, if I say right and I put it up here, you will see what will happen. It will get apparently something very weird. Uh, Sorry, that should be in here, and this will be the bottom. That should be it. It's basically, you want to do this, but not like that. That looks weird. So what I want to do is I want to have it only after we draw the line. We have this, but you will not notice it anymore if I refresh. There you are. You can see here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to say here then to the very top. Or sorry, not here. The right side maintains, but top. So what happened now is it will draw a line from this point to here and all the way to the top. And then this point here, we don't have to create another line. We can just say to close the path. So we're going to say CTX dot close path. Then I can say here CTX dot fill this shape that we just created. Fill it up with our background color, which is slightly transparent. There we are. Now we have this nice effect here working absolutely phenomenal. If I hover over a tooltip, it will always be on top and will not block off anything else. Absolutely wonderful. And that's it.